All right, welcome Alex to the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for having me, Jeff. Yep. So I think most viewers will know who you are, but just in case, could you do a brief introduction of yourself and what Handcash is all about? Sure. Uh, I'm Alex Agut. I'm the CEO of Handcash, and Handcash is a company that uh, you know uses Bitcoin in this case to string money uh, across apps and games. And and so far we've been in part of the BSV ecosystem ecosystem, if you want to say it, since 2000. Well, since the fork, and we started with B on BCH early in 2018. So we've it's been it's been a few years already. Yeah. And, you know, I, I talk about you guys often because I think, you know, at a certain point we had different many, we've had di many different crypto wallets, right? Um, mm. I've always felt, and this isn't, you know, this is just my opinion. I've always felt that hand cash is kind of, is running away in terms of the wallets. I know people have issues with security and that sort of stuff, which, you know, people have various opinions about that. But in terms of usage, to me, it's, it's closest to what you would expect from a traditional fintech app. And I don't think any wallet, I mean, I haven't really tested other chain other than say BTC or BCH, but I, I think it's just not close in terms of the user experience. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, well, I think the, there have been many wallets and I think there will be many more wallets and I think that's healthy, right? Uh, not yeah. just because of competition, but because uh, different people and different businesses have different needs. so. Um, um, I told, uh, we've always been very respectful in th that regard that some people may not like uh, some of the features that we offer or the way we handle things. We don't have any issues telling them like, hey, maybe, you know, uh, Sendby or RelayX or Money Button, whatever could be a best fit for you. So we just think that, you know, we, we, ha we have a very clear vision of the way we want to do things. And also we've always been thinking that uh, why do we have to replicate what every other wallet seems to be doing because everyone else seems to be doing the same exact thing on every single it's not just every blockchain also on bsv so you know we just wanted to be different because we think uh the main reason why we exist is because we didn't like the status quo of, of mm -hmm. bitcoin especially in the ux side right makes sense so the big recent change you guys have been teasing is the integration of USDC into the wallet. So we're going to talk about that for a bit. So my, my first question about it is why was that such a big focus for you guys over the last few months? Sure. Um, um, at first we have, well, let's, let's go back to the, to their very beginnings. So when we started Handcast, the vision was to use this technology. Uh, to create an awesome money app, right? Mm. The thing is that we realized that there were many things that we had to um, to just, you know, for example, until we we came up with this concept of, uh, you know, zero, um, it's not that we came up with zero conf, but we were the the only ones that removed the confirmations from the wallet, right? Uh, we also, as far as I know, we were the first wallet to add uh, like usernames, and we we made a lot of things like this because we wanted to focus on having a great UX, right? Mm -hmm. And so people, so people can get the benefits of using crypto technology, uh, you know, the benefits of using crypto, but without having to deal with all this nonsense that's uh, kind of a low level thing, right? That That's very fine if you're a developer, but for users, uh, it can get very hard to get started with using one of these applications, right? So uh, one of the last things, if not the last thing that we had to solve was that uh, you know people still don't want to use Bitcoin as money, and that's that. It doesn't matter if it's called BTC, BSV, whatever. Every chain has its own reasons why, but uh, most most of it is because uh, in most chains they only want to use these tokens for speculation. So you know if if I don't know if you're here for speculation, you don't you, you're not going to spend it, right? So it doesn't make any sense to spend it. So what we were thinking is that can we use the BSV network as a way to send uh, money in a fast and efficient way, but we are using ultimately the money that people want to use. So that's been our goal for or our focus for for over two years. But we thought it was something so obvious that you know someone else would do it on BSV, right? Uh, we were wrong. <laughs> we we tried with. We tried with something we call Duro, which, you know, 
it failed, but it was kind of a good idea on paper, but just failed. But uh, we thought that, you know, at least given that if we can have a, um, if we can have a, a stable coin, let's at least have a, a brand that we can control ourselves, you know, not just the brand, but also the way you use it and the way you promote it for, for video games and all of that. So the thing is that that didn't work and ultimately uh, businesses and everyone, they were just telling, they were telling us like, uh, we love hand cash, we love how it works, we love the UX, we love the wallet, but if you make it, make this wrong with USDs, uh, we have a deal, right? And I've been talking to casinos, I've been talking to a lot of um, kind of, of companies. Oh, here's my cat. She wants to be in the, she wants to be in the picture. Um, uh, so, so ultimately we had to decide to go with a stable coin mm -hmm. and we were giving it a thought and it, it made a lot of sense just to go with USDC instead of, of issuing our own stable coin, not just because it was already issued, right? But also because the brand has a lot of reputation. Mm -hmm. I think right now you could say it's the clear winner of the stable uh, on, on, on the stable coin battles, if you want to say that there's some kind of battle for being the top stablecoin. And also we we really are pretty much aligned with, with Jeremy Allaire, who's the founder of, of, of Circle. I think uh, we share a very similar vision on, what, on that, you know, our top priority is that payments should, uh, you know, we, we have to make sure that payments can be streamed across the internet super quickly, right? And with no barriers, I think that that, that improves uh, a lot of businesses in a lot of ways, uh, streaming money. And I think Circle has more of an institutional approach, right? So we want to, we, we like that approach, but we want to be like a front, like a user facing uh, company. Um, at USDC, I don't know, we just look, for us, it was a um, no brainer because if you just issue your own uh, USD stable coin, on BSV, um, yeah, it's a nice feature, but it's not as powerful as just being able to use this language because USD is ultimately like a USDC has become ultimately like a, a language that's shared across multiple blockchains, right? So by using USDC instead of doing our own stable coin, we are accessing that huge ecosystem that's growing super quickly of USDC um applications payment systems and all of that so also we have been working uh with circle for for over a year now uh because our fiat ramps already use their their their, their technology and it's you know it's a great uh, technology we are very familiar with with the uh, with um, with the, their apis we also have a great good relationship with the account managers and all that so we just asked them for you know uh we told them what what we uh, were our plans, and they gave us the green light. And I think they will um, be really looking very closely to the to the situation, just in case that um, at some point they decide to issue it themselves on on USDC. You mean on BSV, right? Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, on BSV. <laughs> yeah, I think that is probably. I mean, that's a huge step if that happens because. Yeah, a lot of the folks, excluding myself's issues with using it on other chains, is the clunky UX and the high, potentially high gas fees, right? Right. And, you know, USDC, I think, is a great idea. Yeah. But, um, you know, the issue is, you know, we can't. I mean, it is. It doesn't matter how many you have if you can't move it, right? Then it's zero. Yeah. And well, uh, yeah. to be fair, in most with most chains is almost instant and the fees are uh, relatively small. Um, the issue is that, you know, things like the kind of payments that we do with applications like Haste or whatever, you know, like having like up to a thousand participants in one payment, uh, the UTXO management, uh, you know that that's very, let's say complicated at least uh, in all those chains. And also, again, uh, um, the, the reason that even if we think that you know there's some uh, the development on BSV is kind of stalled a little bit, right? Uh, for the last few months or whatever, you could say the same about uh, every other um, ecosystem. Or if you say that 
that uh, BSV has ha, has had to recently face some 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 issues in terms of scaling or yeah. you know anyway all this uh, empty block uh, miner thing that you explained very well at your channel by the way um, so um, so is all every other chain every other chain is also facing some scaling issues and reputation issues and sometimes they are down like for two days right so I, I think that uh, you can take that against um, against BSV in this case. Yeah. Well, the point about the UTXO model is key, right? Because, right. Um, yeah, sure, I can probably send it for, you know, a thousand, or sorry, a very low unit of whatever on Solana, which we're going to get into right. in a second, or Tron, right? Um, outside of actually having to acquire those coins to transact, you're still dealing with account models, right? You're not dealing with cash or splitting money, like and like you said, right. streaming money. Um, the ability to airdrop USDC like a cent, you know, in the haste example, I mean, it, it would be huge, right? Uh, because yeah. yeah, and that's that would just be that would work. Of course, there's some overhead because you know you have to do a different <clears> type <throat> of protocol on top of the blockchain, but it's supported because of the the low fees. Um, yeah. Okay. The, the next question I wanted to ask about this was why, yeah. So for example, you explained it pretty well of why you guys decided to integrate it, but why would businesses choose to use USDC over BSV? There's some obvious points there, but I think you perhaps have some right. more insight into that. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, our feedback has been very constant with, basically every business that we have uh, talked to, right? So most businesses most businesses don't even care or want to do anything with crypto. And that's the reality. And if and if they're interested in crypto, BSV is like a, a subset of that, right? Uh, so what they don't want is to build on something. It's not just only something tribal that, oh, because everybody's against BSV for whatever reason, Twitter or whatever, but that that's kind of nonsense. The reality is that if you go to even crypto conferences, most most people don't even know what BSV is, right. and that's the, that's the hard truth. Um, so I think that that's not bad per se. Um, but the thing is that they don't want to be feel, uh, to feel trapped that they are implementing something that maybe only twenty people can use, right? Or at least that's their perception. Right. So. Um, so we know that there's, a, even though they don't want to use crypto or they don't feel com comfortable with that, we think there's so much potential for them to use this technology, right? And uh, one of their biggest concerns, if not the biggest, is uh, price, uh, price volatility, right? So by using USDC, that's gone because it's, USDC is just like the digital dollar. You don't have much to explain and that's very ex easy to accept. And in terms of reputation, you know, you have seen that BTC, Ethereum, all these chains have had some hacks or this or that or whatever. But in terms of reputation, USDC, I, I mean, it's like a clean slate, right? Right. You can just sell it as it's the digital dollar and it's also fully backed by by um, by USDs and treasury bonds and all that. So um, also a, a cool thing is that as USDC, something that we talked uh, uh, previously that uh, is, is issued on a lot of chains, uh, they don't feel trapped on just one particular ecosystem. So the cool thing is that by adopting USDC, businesses feel like they are part of a much bigger ecosystem that that extends beyond uh, blockchain tribalisms, right? Because you could be using Phantom Wallet on Solana or whatever. I could be using Handcash, which is in on, on BSV, and this other guy can be using whatever people use on Polygon, right? But we all have this language in common, USDC. So um, the, what we want is the companies that in, integrate our SDK and, 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 and our API uh, uh, ultimately are able to access all these, uh, you know, this huge ecosystem and, and all these po potential users because it's just a matter of using the USDCs that they already have. Right. And, and that's for businesses. But if we're talking about users, uh, it's great for them because there's nothing new to learn. It's just a, a digital version of the dollar. And, you know, we already have a kidless system, so they don't have to take care of the 12 words. Uh, we, are, we are paying fees for the user. For the user. 
and for the company so they don't have to worry about having enough BSV to pay for network fees or whatever, we take care of that. And again, that's something that I think is cool about the UTXO model, at least the way that BSV works. I don't know if this is something possible in all these other blockchains, but it's very cool that we can just add another input of of um, that you know that we are paying for the fee, mm -hmm. so users don't not users or businesses have to have uh, hold PSV in order to use the uh, our, our products. Yeah, I think that's a huge step because, um, like is. I mentioned, getting you know having to do some of this stuff on other chains and having to get the native token. I mean, I've seen people complain about that online, right? You know, you open up something, you try to use it. And you think, oh, I have USDC. Oh, but now I need Tron. Oh, but oh, now it it's like hey, it happened to me. I've been four years in this industry, and I was trying to use uh, Solana the other day for testing purposes, and I couldn't, I couldn't send anything, and I, I couldn't figure out what was wrong, and I, do, I didn't realize that I needed to have some uh, regular Sol tokens to to pay for the gas fees, uh, and the issue is that at least if they, you know. You know, Phantom Wallet is pretty cool or whatever, but um, when I was trying to send money, I never got any any message saying like, oh, you don't have enough Solana to pay for the fees or gas fees. So I don't have, I didn't have any guidance. This is very, very bad UX. So at least we are uh, getting rid of that ourselves for, for our users. And also the entry cost is horrible because you have to spend like, there's, there's something that I tweeted today. In order to start using USDC on Phantom Wallet, uh, you have to spend 30 bucks to get 25 USDCs and then 30 bucks to get uh, 25 bucks worth of, of soul, right? So you have like, you spend like 60 bucks on two different currencies uh, and you have to figure out that you have to do both things, right? Because there's no guidance. And, and then if you want to use it, you have to install a Chrome extension, copy the 12 words here, put it in the Chrome extension. I don't know, which is a fucking mess. It just, it, it's just, it's, hold on, man. It, I was, it's, I was, it's, I was terrible. Told... it's terrible. It's a terrible user experience. And this is something that, and this is maybe Phantom Wallet is probably the most polished uh, user experience <laughs> out there in terms of crypto that's not uh, BSV. Hold on, man. I was told Solana is the future of finance, going to take over everything and dominate. Oh, that, they got have... millions of users and all this crazy stuff. Oh, in Miami, uh, this is fun. Um, you know that a few weeks ago I was in Miami and we went to Wynwood, which is a, 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 a neighborhood in the north of, of Miami. Um, and and there was an FTX store, I think. Uh, there was, I don't know if it's <laughs> open, but it was, it was like four or five people standing around, like nobody was entering to buy anything, but they, in theory, they were accepting USDC and, you know, it looked cool. But I think, I don't know, every, I get the sense that every time that I use Solana or I think it's just like, it, it, it's, it's like they don't even expect anyone to, to use it. It's just like they need to have posters everywhere and stores yeah. and, and, and pay for PR or whatever, but they don't really expect anyone to be using this. No. But I, I get that feeling. I'm sorry, because I, if I'm hurting someone's feelings that uh, who's holding Solana or whatever, but I get that feeling. Well, we have the same. I mean, it's across all cryptos, man. I mean, like you said at the beginning, it's all about speculation. No one, no one actually. I mean, some people do, right? I mean, I use Haste. I use some of these other apps, and you know, people definitely use them. But right. comparatively, relatively, it's such a speck in the dark, right. in the like it's one grain of sand in the whole beach of people that actually want to use it. Most people are here for the pump, and you know, with this recent incident, like you you just mentioned, FTX. This is gonna come. This is gonna slap folks across like reality. You know, cold slap because when the USD value goes away, which that's what we're talking about, USDC. When that goes away, what is there? Like I'm seeing people. Oh, well, it's still decentralized. Well, decentralized is zero doesn't mean shit, right? Like no one wants to be a part, a decentralized part of something that doesn't have any monetary value. And that's why I think that as this stuff continues to crater. The more usage on an actual chain where you can do stuff like you're talking about, if you can send USDC in novel ways that other chains can't, that puts a actual floor, ironically, that puts a floor price on the actual yeah. asset compared to these other ones that, you know, no one's actually using. 
you know, so it'll it'll be interesting to see. Uh, and, and even and even more than that, um, I think we have already gone through through the same cycle like three or four times, and I bet it's like ninety percent of the times you are screwing up the same people over and over again. And I don't know. I don't see that people who have been wrecked on crypto like two or three times recommending this to their friends and family anymore. I mean, I think there's a limit of times that uh, when you can screw up the same yeah. people over and over again. So I think the only way this technology moves forward is is through real utility and solving um, problems for businesses in the real world. I think what we can do with Handcash, the, the way we are streaming payments, do we, we talk to newspapers, we talk to uh, gamble sites, we talk to sports betting sites, we talk to video games. Uh, there's so many unique, fit, unique features that we do uh, through this technology uh, by just streaming payments or sharing uh, private information. Uh, there's so much to do with this technology that can solve real problems. The problem mm -hmm. is that most, most people just want to fake that they have something that has some kind of traction just to get some money from investors. And, you know, uh, good for them because, you know, like cash in, bro out, right? <laughs> but, uh, bro down, sorry. Uh, that was the famous phrase from, from South Park. Um, uh, good for them, but uh, I think that's a very min uh, a minority. I think uh, if PayPal did that, like, in 2003 or 2005 or so, uh, we wouldn't know about we wouldn't know about PayPal now. Uh, they would have just disappeared like a lot of years ago. If they didn't have any substance, if they didn't, uh, if they were not fixing any real pro, uh, real world issues, there was no reason for them to to stay around. Yeah. So um, one thing I want to get back to is talking about potentially onboarding on, from other chains. My, my right. first question around that is, do you think there is demand sitting outside of, say, the Bitcoin SV ecosystem to use BSV apps? Um, I don't want to be harsh, okay? But I don't think there's any demand and there will never be any demand for BSV apps that way, right? Uh, I think... I think it's just a very small, tiny niche subculture, right? Uh, which is cool because we, that's where geeks like you and I <laughs> are living right now and we are building pretty cool products and we think that hopefully something sticks. Um, but the reality is that I don't see this niche ecosystem growing. I don't see any tailwind. I don't see any reason why purely BSV focused apps have to grow. I think the technology itself is great and it, it enables us to do very cool things like what you're doing with Windbull, for example, like with uh, all these articles, because you know, it's much better. It, it's much better than using Pocket or something because you're in control of, of your data. You don't have any spyware, you know, getting your passwords, things like that, right? Um, I, also, you know, what we are doing with streaming money. I mean, it's super cool that you can just send one penny to Japan instantly. There's a lot of, of value in that, but I think that's more of a feature that uh, that the, this network allows us to have. Uh, that does not mean that that there's demand for um, low-level BSV stuff. I think that's I, I don't see any demand for that. So that makes sense. The reason I ask that is because you mentioned that integrating USDC will make Handcash thus apps that integrate with Handcash part of this greater ecosystem. So yeah. I guess to phrase it in a different way, do you see, say, people that have USDC on other blockchains now potentially checking out Handcash? Because that would oh. open their eyes, right? And then they would see. Sure. Yeah. Once you start once you start seeing that you can use all the apps on the app gallery, uh, like like Windbow or or Haste or Duradox or um I don't know, we have so many, uh, peer game or whatever. You can use it with USDC. Uh, you know, a, a, all they care is that, oh, I can play all these games and casinos and, and social media sites and all of that. I can do all of that through Handcash with my USDC. And when I'm done, I can just, re, you know, withdraw my USB, uh, USDC back to my 
uh, favorite wallet or whatever, right? But uh, I think there's a lot of potential for um, for not just users, for, but for developers to think as, okay, so this is a pretty cool set of SDK, uh, of, of API calls, a pretty nice SDK where it allows me to have a very unique user experience and make money. And, and also I can st still market this, you know, st still market my app to everyone that's on this USDC ecosystem. I think that's very powerful. And that tells you that it's, it's not about the token, at least it's, it's not about the blockchain technology that you use, right? You use whatever technology works best, but the token in, in this case is USDC. And I think it's pretty cool because it's like, like I said before, is it, it has become more like a common language between blockchains for doing payments. And I, I don't know, I think it makes a lot of sense because if you actually think about it, uh, in these early stages, there are some people that didn't want to use BSV because I don't like those three letters, right? But you you have the same user experience. You change those three letters with other three letters and they would be fine with it, right? So the right. problem is those three letters. So yeah. let's get rid of those three letters, but let's keep using the technology on the background, right? Because it's it's great for us. It's great for them. Mm. Okay. Um, let's talk about practicals of how this is going to work. So. Sure. Will people, for example, be able to take their Solana USDC and deposit into Handcash or whatever and then immediately yeah. start using stuff? Yeah. Uh, in, th in fact, I've been testing it today with one of our junior developers, Carlos. He built the system uh, with some help from, from Brandon and, and Ivan, but he, he has done a great job with that. And it takes from, from USDC Solana to having... Uh, USDC on handcash. It took me uh, around two seconds. Sweet. It took so so you can you just get a, a Solana address or a QR code. You scan it, send. That's it. Uh, you don't have to think anything else. And I think that's you know the potential is huge. I mean, we see it working, and it's it's incredible. Now we are in stages of of you know testing more of the performance at bigger scale, I, like with hundreds of participants at the same time over and over again or whatever, but we're very happy about the integration with tokenized. I think we ultimately uh, Brandon made, because it was Brandon Bryant who made this decision to go with um, with tokenized ultimately. Uh, from my side, I thought that it would be the best decision also because they, instead of having a, a protocol, like it was not just a protocol, it was a, a, full, a fully fledged platform. So they already tackled a lot of issues with tokens and issuance and and auditing and all of that, that it would have taken us years to build. Mm -hmm. So it was, but anyway, this is a little bit out of off topic, but yeah, so it, not just from Solana, uh, the, I think, I don't remember how many blockchains are we going to support from start, but I know it's Polygon, Hedera, Flow, Solana. I think even Ethereum, although the, we're thinking about it because uh, the fees from Ethereum are so high that, you know, but anyway, uh, users will be paying for it. You know, that's something that if yeah. you're sending money from Phantom Wallet, that's nothing that we can control, right? Yeah. Um, but ultimately uh, for Tron also. Uh, so if you, the, the cool thing is that you can say whatever you want about these networks that maybe they don't scale or whatever, but the thing is that at least at current scale, which is like, very few people using it, to be honest. Uh, they kind of work, right? And they're pretty instant. And as, I think also, especially is because um, the tech stack from Circle that we use is so polished and so good that, I don't know, they, they have some so many internal systems that make the experience so so much nicer for us to integrate. So in the, instead of just having to integrate by ourselves all, the, all, these, all these chains. Okay, cool. So once users are in hand cash and they convert to say USDC, I yeah. think the next thing that needs to be there to add the true value is being able to exit. And that's, that's a huge thing for also the existing BSV users is being able to quickly go from the coin or tokenized USDC to actual dollars in your bank account. Right. So how is that going to work within Handcash? Yeah, so 
the frustrating thing is that technically it's, it has been built for months or most of it. So so it's taking longer than we expected to implement the off ramps to, to your bank. Um, the withdrawals uh, to other USDC chains, that's a given. It's, it's, it's very easy. It's already implemented. So for the change, same change, you can go in and out. But for sending it to your bank account, it's more of a it's more of a um, legal situation, right? It's it's been ready for months, technically, I guess, as I said. But um, we need to have the proper legal setup, and and crypto regulation is something that's been changing fairly quickly in the last few months. So you know, for a small company like ours, is is hard to to um, tackle all of that, right? Uh, I don't know. It's we are we are a small company, and and things are changing so fast in terms of regulation. And we have to we we had to shut shut down a, a company that we set up in Estonia that we intended to do, uh, to use for this. So this would have been ready like a year ago. Um, things didn't work out with Estonia. They changed the regulation. We had to start a process all over again in in Lithuania. Seems like they changed the regulation all, all, all again while we were. Um, applying for it, but uh, this time we will stay in, in Lithuania for that. And and also we have started the process of, you know, with FinCEN and all of that in the US, which, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, you just have to do it, right? You have to go through this, but it takes like, uh, you have to pay a lot of lawyers, you have to have the right, the right setup, um, have the right advisors. Uh, so it's more of a legal challenge, but we are optimistic, and we think that by the end of the year, uh, it should be should be there, should be there, and maybe even maybe even sooner. But I, I, I think our focus right now is maybe the the legal setup for everything is by the end of this month, everything's ready, both in the US and Europe, and with that we can serve most users, uh, uh, most countries. Um, but we really need to to get this USDC thing out. So I think the priority right now is to get USDC out and then we will add all these, um, these other, uh, uh, let's say features. I don't think, I don't know if we can call it features. I think it's one of those things that you must have, right? Yeah. Um, but it's also a feature that we need to, to, to take a couple of weeks to, to implement with, uh, with the current setup. So without that, how would a user off ramp? Well, we are going to also add gift, uh, the ability to buy gift cards, and you can also send away your BSVs or your USDCs to any other chain. Okay. So at least you know they're not trapped in hand cash. Uh, it's just that sending it to your bank account is kind of uh, it will take a uh, two or three months more. So okay, but. But you will be able to buy like a hundred dollar gift card from Amazon or even a. Uh, we are going. I think the, our provider also offers like uh, Visa prepaid cards, so you mm -hmm. can get a thousand dollar Visa prepaid card, and it's like in theory, it's like you're cashing out to right. your bank, something like that. You can, you can use that that Visa on on any, on any store. So, I think it that does the job. But ultimately, we want to be connected to your bank account. Yeah. So if I, but what if I wanted to take the USDC and say off ramp to say Tron and then use exchange? Do uh, I need Tron? Would... No, 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 no. You can no, no. You don't need any of that. You don't need to have any Tron to pay for the fees or whatever. That's something that Circle takes care of. That's pretty okay. cool. Something. So that's good. Ex ex except for Ethereum. I know that for Ethereum, it's. They don't want to take care of the fees. Yeah, because they can't um, pay for that. They can't be paying right. 50 bucks. They can't be paying right. 50 bucks just for an API call. Right. But with 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 Tron and and Polygon and all of that, you could you will be able to just send it uh, painlessly. We will have a fee, a processing fee ourselves, because it's not free for us either. So we will have to add a processing fee over there. Uh, I think it should be around one percent. Or uh, we'll we'll try to go, you know, to do the best thing that we can, but. You know, there's a cost in there. Okay. All right. So kind of transitioning here, but still a bit related. So you guys are going to release this soon. Mm -hmm. um, is this including USDC in the next version of Handcash? Is that the same thing as Handcash 5? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. when is that coming out? 
hopefully um we wanted it to be already out right uh or or well the thing is our, our target for was our target for having usdc up and running was in by for the end of october our internal target and we're very close to we're very close to it um we are just putting everything together and making sure that also the the legal setup is is in there for for the um, for the token management, uh, which should be ready maybe next week. Um, so I don't know any time now. I, I mean, we still need to, especially what we want to do is that to take some like two or three weeks to test with uh, with developers, mm. so they can test you know haste and all these uh, all these apps. They can test using USDCs, so we can see you know if we have to polish something before before launching. Also, we would like to run a private beta. So, um, so handcast users might be able to 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 um, or some handcast users will be able to get um, to beta test this technology, and once we think that everything's as good as we think uh, as we need it to be, uh, then we will launch. But I would say that the, you know the app, the UI is like ninety percent there already, and it's just a matter of. Putting every, you know, like putting all the strings together so every con all the connections work uh, perfectly and there are no hiccups. Okay, cool. And um, with the, so let's say an app like Haste or whoever implements USDC and people start getting income in that. Right. Would they be able to easily switch between BSV and USDC? Yeah, we have a swap feature. Uh, it will also have like a, like a, I, I think it's it should be around one percent uh, or maybe maybe less I don't know uh, I think it should be around one percent uh, but you can swap with BSV and USDC and vice versa whenever you want and it's instant so okay great pretty cool okay now let's let's talk about some other stuff related to hand cash file so a big thing that I've seen users uh, complain about including myself, is that we noticed this big time with haste, right? Because now we're getting to the point where there is lots of usage in terms of notifications, right? Someone plays yeah. split to 100 different people. So people are getting these micro payments, receipts all day long from folks playing haste. Yeah. It became even more of an issue with the Monster Bombs launch where tons <laughs> of people were playing yeah. to the point where if you receive 10 bucks in your wallet, you would like, never see. Can't it. find it, right? Because right, can't search, can't filter. So, what's being done to address that UX issue? Sure. Uh, one thing that we are going to launch this week, if if we are having some issues uh, building the the you know I, the, the 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 actual build that we sent to the App Store, uh, they have they, they, seems like they changed something with Xcode, and we are having some issues to uh, export that, but. Um, we think that if not this weekend, maybe on Monday or, or Tuesday, we're going to be adding notification filters. So you can set up like, don't notify me below, you know, X amount, right? And by default, that's turn off. Uh, but if you can, you can put it to, you know, you can set it to one cent, five cents, one dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, I don't know, whatever you want. So you will only receive um, notifications for payments over that amount. I think that's part of it, uh, and another way of of mitigating this thing is that it's, it's going to come with uh, with a five point version because we have a new layout. So uh, you will have uh, like a like an app drawer like you have on Android that you can just drag up, and then you will see all your apps that you have connected. But instead of when you when you tap, instead of just launching the app directly, you will have like a screen for that app. Uh, so there you can see uh, all the transactions that are only from that app. And, and also um, you will be able to just launch the app right, for, uh, right from there. And it, it's a pretty nice screen. I think it was very needed because sometimes you just want to see your, hang, uh, your haste payments or dura logs or whatever, right. right? And so it's not a filter per se, but it does that. Right. And, and over time we will add... Uh, things like being able to search per words or 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 on, only show me starting from this amount. Yeah. 
So, and and on the on the cards on the menu that you, we're going back to the to the old uh, card design where you had this top this card on the top, right? So um, we will have one for PSV and another one for USDC. So when you tap there, the list of payments that you will see below is a summary of the last I think it's five pay, the last four or five payments that you re, uh, uh, that you sent or received. Um, but only the ones that are manual, right? Like they don't come from any app. Yeah. And I think that will help because, you know, if I send you like 20 bucks because I owe you 20 bucks for, you know, uh, the beers that we, <laughs> that we drank on, <laughs> on Austin the other night, right. Uh, or for the Uber, right. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, then you will be able to see it right away. I think with those two things, uh, that should be pretty much addressed. Then we will add some advanced functions for filtering and all of that. But the, the thing is that we we are a very small team and we need to focus on our time on the big bottlenecks, mm. right? Yeah. So if our big bottleneck right now is, is, is BSV as a currency, it doesn't matter how much we polish filtering or whatever, because we're not getting we are not getting any more apps or any any more usage by doing that, right? So right. We always try to focus our resources on what on whatever is the next bottleneck to tackle. Okay, and th that to see the last BSV because I think that's crucial. Well, at least for me, anyways, because finding the needle in the haystack, right? Well, you'll be able to scroll that list, right? Right. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I think those changes those would be huge to, for fixing this a lot of this stuff. Oh, um, they they will help. Yeah. So have you guys, because one thing I've been thinking about with all that data, right, because each of the, those notifications, I mean, I'm sure that's a record in some database for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, I think what's happening right now is probably tiny compared to where it's going. But have you guys considered the value of that data? Because you guys have it alone, right? I mean, there's not really ways yeah. for people to export. I know folks can get CSVs, but say... Haste. Haste is a great example. For Haste, they might want to know the peak times when people are playing. Even right. a user might want to know that because they might make a decision on when they actually play to get on the leaderboard, right? So these right. types of things, I think, probably already are valuable, but will continue to gain value in the future. So, I mean, I know you guys are focused on USDC and streaming money, but have you considered that potentially the data that you have is actually valuable. Yeah, yeah, def definitely. Um, um, well, you as a developer know that we have this developer dashboard, right? Um, so one of the sections that we plan on adding at some point <laughs> is, is having uh, uh, analytics. And because we, as you said, there's so much value in, in having good data, good mm -hmm. reliable data that you can see, you know, if, there is something that we also uh, do, right? Because if you want to do like a Twitter promotion, right? You need to know which which day is the, or not a promotion. If you want to launch something, which is the day where it will be more effective to, um, and what time uh, do you publish a tweet, right? So for us, it's like Wednesdays at, um, Wednesdays at, at um, 12 p.m. US, uh, well, M Miami time. So, because we have the data, right? And if you're if you have the data, you're not acting blindly. And I think there's a lot of value in the kind of data we have. Um, it's just a matter of of abstracting it in a way that that makes sense. Also, uh, you see, you can see right now. Uh, imagine for for the fiat ramps, uh, we we notice that people when whenever there's a huge spike, either either is if the money is a if USDC value goes up or it goes down, when there's a big spike in either direction, we have a lot of sales, um, which is interesting, right? Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things that when you have data, you can prepare. And and I think uh, through the dashboard, we, we will definitely um, add those kind of things in the future. But as you said, uh, right now we have other other things to do, but yeah, yeah definitely is, is the, the potential is huge. And um, back speaking on those notifications and the filtering and all that stuff, um, have you noticed how people have been using the hand cash notifications? So 
what I'm seeing is people are using that to promote their products, NFTs, whatever. So what I'll see is those, because it's so cheap, especially yeah. with the price, you know, BSV is 40 bucks now. I mean, you know, yeah. it's so cheap yeah. to be able to do this. They'll send three payments or however long their message is. They'll say, join this Discord with this link and yeah. this thing, or this is how many NFTs I'm trying to sell. And they'll send you four in a row. And it yeah. costs them like 2,000 sats, which is less than a tenth of a penny. So um, I know we have the pew pew future to do that. But uh, have you guys taken notice of that and have thought about optimizing? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um... We still don't have a, define, a definitive design yet, but we have seen this trend and we think it's a great tool for for promoting uh, content. So what we're thinking right now is that maybe in the note field that you have as a developer, you will be able to add a, a link. Maybe we can shorten it or we can, maybe we just get the full link. And what we want is that somehow the users, um, are able to open the transaction details and maybe they see a preview of the link, right? Mm -hmm. With a preview image, like you see on Twitter. And and then you and then you can click or whatever. Uh, we are also very interested in adding um, a feature for Connect, which is something that's very, been very demanded, but with PSV, it didn't make much sense because it was complicated, which was escrows. So imagine that you send a promotion where you send like, um, you know, I attach five cents to every single one of these transactions, right? And you don't receive money per se, but if you open the link, uh, it will uh, unlock these five cents and you get the five cents, right? Uh, I think that's something pretty cool, especially with USDC. And if people don't click, you know, in 24 hours or whatever, uh, you recover the money back. I think that's one of those amazing, can do with Bitcoin and it's I, I know it's I, I can't I couldn't figure out how to do that with Visa or no well, you, you just can't you know well. the, the protocol supports a lot of this type of stuff but there's been virtually right. no implementation of it right like using C right. cash flags anyone can pay um you could do a lot of that stuff and way yeah. more securely right because right um, you just partially build transactions, but obviously that's a big change to how most companies yeah. implement because 99.9% yeah. .9 are just sending stuff to an address, right? Right. So with, uh, we are working uh, with, I'm working with um, Brandon Kreiderman on the new version of, of Pew Pew, and it will be more, uh, more of a revenue stream for us because we saw that, you know, we launched this as a test app a stupid test app that we thought that nobody would use. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, people keep using it, right? And and we are seeing how how organically it has been evolving. Mm -hmm. And what we want is to adapt the tool to how the people uh, how people are using it, right? Yeah. So ultimately we saw maybe we can turn it into a revenue stream for us. Also because it's it's you know like maybe charging like you know uh, if you pay like five bucks uh with we charge like 5% and the other 95% is split again, uh, with all users exactly. or whatever. And not just, not just, um, not just for making money, but I think it's for sending a message and, and also to showcase the technology that how you can, uh, add a fee and royalties and pay a hundred people at the same time, all of that in one transaction. I think exactly. that's fantastic to show. And also because that, uh, that way we can take it more seriously as put ourselves in the, in, in the mindset of this is not a, to, a toy anymore, right? So yes. if we want to build something for real that people are using uh, and that could be a business on its own, um, how can we, because I think the mindset uh, determines a lot how you build stuff. Because if it's a business and you think, and you're looking at the revenue and you treat it that way, it's very different as if you just launch something as a hobby app or, or a test app, right? It's, right. it's very different. So I don't know. I, I think we are going to see uh, even a lot more usage on uh, from Pew Pew if we start adding things like, and also because it allows us to set an example. Uh, again, there's another feature that's not been discussed publicly much, but it's something that we are already testing with. Uh, for what I know, at least with Haste and and uh, this uh, real world podcast and some other apps. 
which is the ability that uh, uh, if you go to haste, you can create a hand cache wallet right away without having to do any verification, right. uh, any, you know, just with, with just an email verification, right? It's yeah. a partial account and some limits. But the cool thing is that you don't have to download the hand cache wallet and do all, all of that and then connect to haste or what. So it's just, uh, you, you can create it on the fly. Mm. And that's something that we are looking for. Um, maybe that's a good onboarding experience also to add to to the pay pistol, and we'll see how it how it works. Ultimately, even though we want to uh, treat this a, as a business right now, it's still like our um, uh, our um, testing up. That's for whatever reason people keep using. <laughs> so I think it's a good test bed for testing. Um, all these things ourselves uh, and put ourselves in the in the in the shoes of our uh, uh, clients. Yeah. Um, one thing, another thing that I've noticed that I think is potentially really powerful and also harps on what you just said about being a serious business is um, I've talked a lot about and in integrated pick, uh, progressive web apps, which are PWAs, right? Which are for those who don't know. They're essentially ways for developers to build applications without going through the Google Play or Apple stores that behave right. as such. And right. on Android devices, it's pretty much 100% featured. You can basically do everything with a PWA uh, that you could on Google Play, making it, you know, if I was, for example, if I was running a corporation, I wouldn't even go, I wouldn't even build an Android, I wouldn't build an Android app. I would build a PWA for Google, and of course, I would have to build an Apple iOS one, right? right. But I would not go through the Google Play Store, for example. Um, the only reason that I would have to build the Apple one is because they refuse to implement all the features to make that because right. uh, that basically would wreck their App Store. That's the reason I, they say, you know, they can peddle any reasons they want. And I know this is a tangent, but I'm going to get to the point. No, Apple can say whatever yeah. they want, but the reason is the reason they don't do it is very simple is because they know it kills their app store. How, so the biggest number one reason I think that people don't implement PWA on iOS is because they do not support push notifications. Whereas the Android PWA does, you can do push notifications. Yeah. Your HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Hand cache with the low fees and the way people are using notifications. For example, Real World Podcast told me this. They did not implement notifications because they see, I'll just use Handcash. I have the same way. I don't want the technical debt of implementing push notifications in my apps. I'll just use Handcash, right? Yeah. So have you th guys thought about that, that basically you might be able to solve that problem for iOS apps? To just yep. hey, use hand cash is like because it's so cheap to sit and you know arguably people should be getting paid for notifications because that's attention. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely correct on this. And and if you remember, we we launched for for uh, although we removed it in in about one month or so. Uh, we tried to add a chat into hand cash. Um, the vision we had for the chat was not mainly for chatting with your friends or whatever. I think it was a great communication channel between the apps and users. Yes. Uh, so we were thinking more in the way of kind of Telegram in, in, in the sense of how they handle bots and channels and all of that. I, we thought that it would be a great communication tool from developers to the users. Mm -hmm. um, we will we de will definitely revisit that decision because, as you said, I think it solves a lot of issues for our developers, and it w it's the reason why we we did it. But ultimately, we couldn't we didn't want to have something half-assed, and we needed we know we knew that we had to um, uh, focus on on what was more important at the at the moment, and you know again. It doesn't matter how much we polish the user experience if nobody else is coming in. So once once we nail down the you know USDC the, and the in uh, cash in cash out ramps and all of that, uh, we're going to revisit that very seriously because it's uh, not just for the chat you know and maybe it's not it doesn't look like a chat or whatever but 
definitely there, there's something that we can do in the regard of, of providing notifications or, or providing an, a, a, a direct communication channel with the users. I, I think it's very valuable. Yeah. It's just, a, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things that I hate to put as an, as an excuse that we are a small company, right? But, um, you know, if you only have like, we, we are 10 people in Handicast, right? And yeah, we could be like adding filters and this and that, whatever. Seems like very trivial things and they are trivial things. But if you don't want to have fast them, you maybe have to spend two or three days, one week right. or whatever for each of those particular things, right? And, you know, we, we can devote like two months of small things when we are not moving the needle with any of them. So I understand that there's some frustration with people using handcast, like in, 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 in that sense, right? Because it works very well, but I mean, it's reliable. Uh, our focus is that it's, it's reliable, that developers like it, that we are growing, that we're going in the right direction. But I understand that there's, uh, there's that frustration with the tiny little things <laughs> that we need to uh, keep adding and polishing in the, but they will be there, they will be there. And as you said, it's a massive pain point I also have a few interesting tweets from months ago uh, of our battles with 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 um, Apple, which never end. Yeah. Uh, there's one particular battle that we that we won recently, and now you can launch. If you are an iOS user, you can launch the apps from the app uh, from the connected apps menu. Uh, look, the thing is that it's a bit hidden, right? So. Uh, we will see if 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 the new layout for the 5.0 version uh you know it, how much do we have to fight until we can get the app published as we want yeah. but anyway the thing is that there's uh seems like phantom wallet can do it coinbase can do it everyone can do it right so for whatever reason i don't know if it's a matter of knowing someone inside or paying someone inside <laughs> or what's the <laughs> Or, or what is the process in there? I don't know if there are bribes involved or whatever, but you know, we will do whatever it takes just to get the the app the way we want. Hmm. So why did you guys add and quickly remove that chat feature? Oh, because it was half assed. Um, okay. It was expensive to maintain, and we would like we would have liked to have. Uh, um, better privacy mm. um you know the all, all messages were encrypted and all of that but we will have like to have like super secure chat uh kind of uh, signal level because it's something that everyone on handcash is very i don't want I, I don't think we are uh, all all of us libertarians or but i think we are um, freedom minded, right? Yeah. We we really uh, appreciate freedom and privacy and all of that, and everyone that's work that works at Handcast. So uh, we don't want a chat that does not reflect our values. Mm. And just to put together something quick and launch it uh, in a way that that we don't feel comfortable with is not something that's in our DNA. Also, it's something that we it allowed. Um, you know, this this is another story, but a year ago, uh, right before Christmas, it was when we removed the chat. And I remember that Rafa and I were like so frustrated with tiny bugs here and there or whatever, because the, the, the code base became so fucking big that we just spent a whole Christmas, only the, the wallet, that we removed like 75% of the code. And and the app and the app was was quicker, better, reliable. And then we uh, um, rebuilt the, the whole onboarding experience uh, three or four months ago. And we used to have a lot of uh, support tickets, like I can't log in, I can't log. Yeah. For whatever we had a lot of issues because we were supporting uh, migrating accounts from the first, the very first version of Handcast up to this point. So for supporting so many paths and decisions and yeah. states and all of that through onboarding, it was a mess. So we just uh, 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 we we just removed the, um, all the migration stuff from inside the app. And if you want to migrate an old account, we just refer you to an to a website that only does that, right? So 
um so yeah we rafa and i especially rafa uh, we have the mindset of instead before adding something else uh, let's see first uh, what can we remove because it's easier to just yeah. delete code right you just yeah. delete it and everything may and sometimes things become much better just by removing mm. um so we have that mindset of sometimes it's much better to uh, b before adding anything else making sure that we can remove anything that's not essential yeah some of the most fun i've had coding is by not coding by just, <laughs> that yeah. stuff, just taking stuff yeah. out yeah um okay so last, we're getting close to the end here last question i wanted to ask is um the last feature you guys added um i with the you know scanning the qr codes on say social media all right hmm. um I saw that some users were confused about it. I think I am a bit myself, but I think I get it. But could you explain the value proposition of what you guys did with these payment links? Oh, you mean hand cash pay? Yeah. So hand cash pay is a um, is a um, is a toolkit, a set of APIs to build uh, payment requests, basically. So that's that's the 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 the, the easy way to explain it. Uh, the cool thing about this is that uh, you don't need to to install our SDK, the full SDK for Connect, and you don't ask users to connect their wallets. So it's great for places where you just want people to um, to you know they're browsing somewhere and they see oh I can buy this, click and you pay it, or just uh, or you are through social media and you see that oh this NFT is for sale and you already have the QR code, you don't even have to click the, the link, you just scan the QR code, right, on social media, right? Um, so I think, you know, this toolkit, it creates you either a, a payment link or a QR code, and you can add it on any platform you want. So it can be in a kiosk, it can be uh, on a website, it can be on, on social media, whatever. And if you share the link, the link itself, the preview image will show the QR code. Uh, so you can always scan it with a, um with with your phone and you will see all the information for the payment you're right in your phone so i think it will be great for doing promotions like selling nfts or or w once we add the shipping uh, the shipping information feature imagine that pat's coffee uh imagine that he can just share like he uh, he can just share links to his coffee on twitter and you can just scan the qr code right without having to enter going through a checkout or login or whatever mm -hmm. you just scan with hand cash you click pay and everything is taken care of and you receive your 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 coffee on uh, at home and and also you can do the same thing in a metaverse app i think this is uh, i think it's called castleborn something like that you oh, yeah. you know this so imagine that you have a virtual pads coffee shop there right you can enter with your with your character and you buy coffee in the virtual in the virtual world and you receive it in in your mailbox so i think there's a lot of cool things that you can do with that or or even adding this is great for adding paywalls the thing is that we wanted people to uh, to to see how ver how versatile versatile this api is by creating a few apps like you know with this you can create like a checkout app like we had with with you know years ago that was called pop mm. it's very popular so with this set of APIs, you can create it right away because when the payment is done, we will alert alert you through a um, uh, through a web. Um, I think it's a web socket. I'm I'm not. I don't know. The thing is that uh, the payment uh, the API will know when the payment is done by the user, so you can redirect the user or trigger uh, sending an email or whatever you want. So the cool thing is that you have. Um, you know, have a lot of flexibility. So we we created two or three demos, like getting an avatar and things like this. But just to showcase that you can just uh, share this link anywhere and you pay and you get the result right away. It, it doesn't matter which platform it is. I think it's going to be very, very powerful. But yeah, maybe there was a little bit of confusion on, on all of that. So technically, when someone pays, Mm -hmm. it, what does it do? It hits like the company server, and that's how they're able to process. Uh, everything works with PIP two seventy, and every, and all payments are peer to peer. 
so it doesn't so we don't have to wait until the you know the transaction is propagated through the miners and yeah. we scan it or whatever it's just um it, it works peer to peer and that's what makes the the payment is is instant it it takes a few milliseconds but what i mean is let's say if i'm pat's coffee and i yeah. put a qr code on twitter or something right obviously that's not my store so when someone scans that how am right. i just because i get the payment doesn't mean i want to ship the goods like how is there well, i mean does Handcash do some type of callback to the company's like server or something? We no, no. We we, we give you um, whatever you do when the payment is completed. That's up to you. You just we just provide the payment and telling you that the uh, we tell you that the payment is done. So what you, whatever you do as a reaction to that payment, you 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 just apply your business rules as you would yeah. like. But I mean, do you guys tell you tell the like the companies? When the payment sure. completed, right? Like there's yeah. some API call made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you That's get that. Yeah, you, gen you generate the you generate the payment, and and we you get alerted when the payment is done. Can you customize like split payments with that QR code? Sure, up to a thousand people. Oh. So, man. so it's 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 as powerful as the as, as the SDK payments that we have. But you can just put it anywhere you want. So people don't have to connect or sign in or do anything like that. They just scan the QR code and pay. And the, the and the current version, you can do it with Handcash and, and BSV. What we want is that ultimately you can pick uh, which network do you want to uh, show the QR code for. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, if you show that this is for Solana or whatever, you just... Um, you could accept USDC from Solana. Yeah, back to the uh, serious business example you gave. I mean, if you're like paying promoters and doing that split real time, I mean, that'd be huge. Like when they, they could just share a QR code on their social media, people can click it and it's customized for them, right? Like they're, they're, they get say 10% to their handle. Like, man, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, no, I, I mean, with the with the link, the 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 link that we give you is the same link that the when you scan it with a QR code, so you can get that link and create your custom QR code with your colors and whatever you do. So all these things that we showed are just demos of what you can build with this, mm. but that's not necessarily that you can that those are the things that you're getting. So right. it, the only thing that we're giving you is a set of API. Cool. Mm. Uh, calls. You can just go to our website and documentation. You can see Handcash Pay, and everything is explained over there with some examples. And uh, but but it's to create. It's an easy way to create payment requests that All will right, be right. extendable to USDC. Hmm. Oh, perfect. Thank. You. <laughs> All right. I think that's a good place to end it. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me.